Hey, this is Brian Chanson, and you're listening to No Sleep Till Sudbury, the show where we talk about the music that makes your skin vibrate. You can connect with us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Brent Jensen Music. And while you're there on YouTube, check out my new video show called Thursday Night Record Club. No Sleep Till Sudbury is brought to you by Pariah Pickups. What you want, what you need, and what you love. Check them out at pariahpickups.com. All right, this week we have an old friend of the show joining us here to talk about his band's new single, it's a cover of a song from a Canadian artist you may not expect, but man, does it ever work. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Storm Force, former Brighton rock guitarist, Mr. Greg Fraser. Fraser, what's up, my man? Welcome back to the show. Oh, well, thanks for having me back, Brent. I'm just settling in here, uh, you know, looking forward to talking to you once again when you... What'd you say? Is this before we got on the air, like fourth time or something? This, this, I believe, is your fourth appearance on the show. Jeez, I'm an elder statesman. Do I, I have, <laughs> I, I have, I have seniority now. <laughs> you do, yeah. Well, there's, a, there's an old joke that if you if you do the show five times, you get a jacket. Oh, nice! Like on Saturday Night Live. Yeah. Oh, well, okay. Well, uh, <laughs> uh, what do we do? What, what do you what are you doing next week? <laughs> <laughs> Taking your measurements. <laughs> awesome man so how you been buddy did you have a good summer and everything or? yeah good it was good it's uh it was busy nice to be out again you know i was downtown i saw a couple shows i saw marcus king in toronto which is really good oh i love marcus king man isn't he so good for a young guy like that holy it's fantastic like the soul and everything where is where how can that be guy be so young and have that so much like so much soul and depth to him it's it's crazy yeah, you know, that's the, I think that's the X factor with him, Phrase, is that he's got that, you know, he, anybody can play, anybody can, you know, but he, he's got that vibe about him. He's like an old soul, but he's in his 20s or something, right? Yeah, like early 20s. I don't think he's even 20. He might be 25 at this point. And, I, and I've been a fan for the last few records, and I got a little playlist just with him on it. And like, I got a chill, I got one that's like a chill playlist, you know, you want to chill out, and I got a bunch of his songs. His voice, though, I mean, like he, old soul, it, it hits it right on the nose. I mean, it sounds like he's been around like forever. And it, when you and you tell so yeah, this guy's only like twenty four years old or something. Get out of here! Like he, he sounds like a like a you know a really well aged wine. You know what I mean? Like just so. How did you like him? Was he amazing? He was so good. And it was interesting because he it was called Marcus Marcus King and the Young Guns. So he brought right. some people with him from. He's down in South Carolina. Yep. And uh, he had a guy with him named Neil Francis, who was also really good. Kind of like a 70s sounding three dog night kind of sound. Okay. You know what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Like, absolutely. Yeah. Like, as soon as I was like, holy shit, who is this guy? Like I'd never heard of him before and just uh, an amazing sound. And a, a girl who sang country, again, very young. But, you know, he headlined, obviously, and just killed. And it was packed in there. It was at the place History. I don't know if you've heard of History. I'm not uh, not aware of that, but I yeah, you know, but I am aware that most of his tours are always selling out, you know, well in advance, especially down in the states and stuff like that. Yeah, so he's catching on for sure for a guy that's not really getting like any airplay or nothing. I mean, you know, it's 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 basically old school word of mouth, and uh, he deserves it, man. That guy, uh, he's got a long future ahead of him for sure. I agree. Wow, yeah. Uh, he's a, he's a special guy. Like he he will go far. I think I was so happy to see that so many people were there to see him because I didn't really know that he was that popular. Oh yeah, I've been following him for a while. Like I, I was there a comedian opening? Uh, yeah, uh, called Dean Del Rey. That's right. Yeah, he he kind yeah. of like filled in. Like he, he right before King went on, he came in just as they were kind of changing over, and he talked. I kind of felt bad for him because people were kind of slagging him a little bit and and heckling him. Yeah, it's, you know, a comedian's not really, you know, like, I, I, I've been listening to Dean, he's got a very popular podcast, I've been listening to him for about five years from now, and, it, you know, he's he's an old rocker, but in, in the in the last 15 years, he decided to become a comedian, like, at the in the mid, his middle 40s, he dropped the music business, so he decided to become a stand-up comedian, but he's actually pretty good on his own, uh, you know, he tours with Bill Burr and stuff like that, and, uh, 
but uh, yeah, opening for a rock show, it's not really a, a comedy environment. Like we're, you know, you go to a, a comedy show because I'm a big comedy fan. You, you, everybody knows the rules. You don't talk. You let the guy do a show, and you go to a rock show. People are like, want they want to rock, so they're mingling around and talking to each other. They don't really give the comedian that much respect. So I could see where you're 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 saying you felt sorry for the guy. He's probably struggling up there just to get everybody's attention, and they just want to see Marcus and. Uh, yeah. But anyways, what I was going to say, he's the guy that turned me on to Marcus King in the first place. Oh. Yeah. Well, way back when his first record came out, he was like 20, 21 years old. And uh, like Dean's from L.A. And uh, he was raving about, oh, this, oh, you got to hear this guy. And then he brings him on the show. And I decided to listen to him as, as, as like, wow, this, you know, he's, he's giving this guy some props. So I just I decided to look him up and went, whoa, this guy's unbelievable for for twenty years old, like unbelievable, like you know, for his, and like his voice, his guitar playing's crazy, but his his voice, I just can't get it. He reminds me of like an old Otis Redding or something. Like yeah. he's got that old bluesy whiskey voice, and it's 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 crazy, yeah. So well, that's and I see you went to uh, see Iron Maiden with uh, with uh, Derek and uh, Mike and the boys there the other day. You met up with those guys, and uh, was it was it an off the hook show or what? I I did meet up with those guys, but I didn't go to the show. Oh, okay. So they went to the show the following night. I think they were in town. Like those guys right. were in Thunder Bay, right? That's that's right. Yeah. So this is actually a really cool story. So so when my first book came out in two thousand twelve. Derek Williamson, Deke, was like from day one a supporter. He sent me this great email and and saying, like, I found your book and I love it and stuff. And we became friends. And, and he's supported everything that I've done virtually since then. But he was always kind of on the other side of the screen kind of thing, right? Like I'd never met him in person. Right. And so yeah. he and uh, uh, T-Bone, his buddy T-Bone, were down to see Maiden. They said, do you want to get together for, a, you know, a drink or, or dinner or something like that? And I said, absolutely, man. Let me know when. And so they came down and I, I went down and uh, finally met them in person after 10 years. Wow. That's that's the crazy thing about the Internet. You can, uh, you know, like even, you know, myself and you, we've never actually met in person yet. Know. But, you know, <laughs> but we feel like old friends. You know that's I mean? right. Isn't that a funny thing? Yeah. It's the thing about the Internet. It's the beauty of the Internet, too. You know, you get to. Uh, you know, you get to know people over, over the years and not actually meet them and stuff. But, uh, well, that's great. Yeah. So that's good. You guys met up. I said, yeah, they're, they're, uh, they're good people for sure, man. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he reached, um, uh, Deke there and reached out uh, about a week ago. Maybe not even, uh, I was mentioning, um, uh, maybe the three of us will be doing another interview sometime in the future discussing, uh, of one of the best live albums of all time, which I won't, uh, won't divulge right now. We'll have to wait and see how that uh, unfolds. But, uh, if that, if that happens, uh, I'm looking forward to it once again. Yeah, me too. That'll be a lot of fun. That was actually fun. <laughs> the first the first one that we did was pretty fun because I, I don't think that you knew that I was coming on and that I was kind of... No, I was <laughs> totally totally blindsided. And then the, the one before that, I'm just talking. was, hey, I got a guest and a couple of guests. Come. Next thing you know, you got Sean Kelly comes on and Andy <laughs> Kern. Andy Kern. I was like, wait a minute. What's, is this like the, this is your life or something? Like what's going on? That's right. <laughs> I, I was, I was I watching know. that one. It was hilarious. Yeah. Your face yeah, was that. so funny. But that, that is cool, though, right? Like, it's a, it's a oh, cool it's, surprise. It's awesome, man. It's awesome. You know, it, it's, that's, the, that's the Canadians in us, you know? We're all just happy people for the most part, and uh, we, we like our music, and, uh, you know, that's what it is. You know? Well, that's it. And, and Deke and I were fans of yours when we were teenagers, right? And, and you and I have talked about that before. I was a big fan of yours. Love your playing. You know, I think that's a good segue into what we're about to do now. Oh, I really appreciate your kind words, man. That's awesome. I love hearing that kind of stuff. You make me feel old when you say that, but I, it's okay. <laughs> hey, man, I'm, I'm no spring chicken myself, crazy. You know I hear you. Oh, yeah, man. Times, <laughs> times catching up to you. That's pretty soon you. Pretty time, pretty soon you'll catch up to me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop for a few years, let you catch up, and then we'll be leaving. <laughs> <laughs> if only I could figure out how to do that. <laughs> I gotta go hibernate somewhere. <laughs> there you go. So I was gonna say, um, your new band Stormforce, not new-ish, has a new single. 
it's uh, it's cool. It's an unorthodox choice. It's it's something you may not expect. So you guys were just fooling around with this, as I understand it, in in rehearsal, and you came up with the cover. The cover is an Alanis Morissette tune called "Uninvited." Yeah, it's a weird thing. Uh, out of the blue, like our our singer Pat, he's got like an acoustic solo thing he's been doing for I don't know twenty twenty five years, and you know you play you play around Niagara Falls and stuff. So he's got a wide repertoire of uh, music to to pick from because you know he'll do corporate stuff and whatever. So he can. It's not just rock. I mean, he'll play Garth Brooks. He'll play Elton John, Rod Stewart, like you name it. He's he's got a just a catalog of millions of songs right and so you know over the years it, it, you know it really helped him as a vocalist instead of sticking to one genre he can sing anything across the board so he loves to sing even he's one of those guys that you know you have a little you know, you have a little fire in your backyard he'll be the guy picking up the guitar and, and singing and stuff so he just loves to sing for the fun of it and uh and then one day he was uh just listening to you know, the radio and Atlantis, that, that song you just mentioned, Uninvited, came on the radio and he starts singing along to it. And he goes, ah, that's, you know, it's kind of interesting. So he can, so he's singing along. So then when the song ended, he just went to his, he's got a little keyboard and a little recording studio in his house. And he just started playing the piano and, and turned his phone on and just played the piano and, and sang like the first verse in the chorus of that song mm -hmm. just for fun. And then he played it back and he said it to me. He goes, hey, check this out. I went, holy shit. Go, that sounds actually really, really good, man. Like it was, there was no plan. It was just a spur of the moment. So we just kind of tucked that away. And then, you know, we're rehearsing for our new record, Stormforge 2, ladies and gentlemen, coming out fall of 2023, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Like the way I crowbar that in there. But anyways, you know, because it's been a while, you know, when our first record came out 2020, you know, we couldn't tour. COVID kicked in. Next thing you know, two hour, two years just flew by, and we didn't really get to do anything. Couldn't play, and you know, uh, it, it kind of put a damper on our our uh, our momentum writing wise and stuff like that. And so then, when we start getting back into things, uh, you know, Pat goes, "You know what? It's been a while. Like, you know, it's going to be another while before the actual second record comes out. Maybe we should just throw a cover out there." You know, and I thought, "What about Uninvited, man?" you sang that great. And then, you know, oh, really? And like, you know, some of the guys are like, I don't know, man. And last more set though. Really? It's like, I don't know, man. Let's, let's just give it a shot. Cause I love the way Pat sings it. Mm -hmm. There's something about the way he sings it. It's just, it's, it's awesome. So let's just record it. And uh, if it doesn't work out, nobody's going to know about it anyways. We won't release it. I got my old buddy, Ray Coburn, you know, from, you know, Ray from Honeymoon yeah, Suite Honeymoon and Sweet. Corey Hart. Show. Yeah, and Corey Hart and Kim Mitchell, and plays for Roger Hodgson's now from Super Tramp. He's just a yeah, he's a phenomenal, legendary keyboard player. He's an old friend. I've I've known him uh, since like 1985, 86. We had the same manager, or my old manager uh, used to manage Brighton Rock and Honeymoon Suite. There was the mm -hmm. only two bands he managed, so we go way back. And I and I, and when if, if he listened to the original song of uh, Uninvited. It's it's not really guitar driven at all. I mean, it's basically start, starts out with a real atmospheric kind of keyboard. So I thought, well, I don't know what to do with this. We're gonna we're gonna need some some heavy duty keyboard guy. What about Ray? I'll get, I'll reach out to Ray. So I reach out to Ray. He goes, absolutely, man. Let's do this, right? So I said, Ray, man, like. I don't know even how to start this song. I mean, you know, it starts with the basic intro, but like where to go from there? Like, you know, would you mind maybe putting just a kind of like a little template down to start off with? And then we can judge from that, how we could build upon that. And he did. And he knocked it out of the park. And went, Whoa. So I let the, let the other, other guys here go, you hearing this? Like, Oh my God. I see. Ooh, wow. So we all got excited just from what he played alone, just with him and, and uh, click track. And that's all we heard was nothing else. And then we took it from there, and then we 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 built the song up from from there. And uh, as things went on, it just became more and more exciting. Next, you know, the adrenaline starts going. And it's like, hey man, I think we're really on to something here. And then we uh, we got the ball rolling, sent it over to our producer Darius Jespanyak, and uh, he uh, he did a fantastic mix on it. And really, he really took it home for us. And when we heard the finished product, we was like, "How can we not release this, man?" And like you said, like you said, it, it, you know, it's not, it's an, it's a song you would never think to do, and it's a complete fluke that we're even doing it in the first place. But 
on the other hand, I kind of like it because because it's not the obvious song. You know what I mean? You know, you're not going to uh, we would never pick an Alanis Morris set song. Nothing against her, but she's not really in our wheelhouse. I mean, like she came out, you know, when Brighton Rock broke up, that's when she came out, you know. So, like, you know, my, my career is already half over before hers even started, you know. Yeah. So it was a weird the way that happened but uh i'm kind of glad the way it all unfolded it's like the world's uh you know all came together and uh it is what it is and you know for those of you who haven't heard it it's on youtube now and it's on spotify and all the all the streaming services out there storm force uninvited check it out oh man i didn't know ray played on that i was going to ask you who that was because Part of the allure for the song is just the eeriness of that piano line at the beginning. It just really sets the stage. It's an eerie chord progression to begin with, but like, holy, it's so dark and atmospheric. Absolutely. You know what? If you if you were to take the original version, right, and take her vocals completely out mm -hmm. and just and just listen just to the music of that song, it is a really haunting song because it doesn't, there's, there's no major chords. It's all minor. And there's certain parts where it kind of gets Egyptian kind of almost like Led, like Led, Led Zeppelin ish. Like there's little, like little uh, cashmere there type of little tones in there, you know? Yeah. But then when you hear her voice, she sweetens it right up. So we took, you know, we took that. It's like, oh, well, we got to put a little bit more muscle on this man, add some more power chords and maybe lower the key, make it even more darker and more haunting sound. And so I mentioned that to Ray and uh, he goes, Oh, I got it. I know exactly what you're talking about. So yeah. So he really set the tone on that. And I got to take my hats off to Ray. Ray, if you happen to be listening to this, thank you so much, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> he, oh, he did a great job. Yeah, yeah. man, for sure. And, and, and you know what? The two other things about the song. So Pat's voice is I've always been a fan. I always I always thought that Pat sounded a little bit like I hear a little Ron Tabak in there from Prism. And oh, nice. Yep. Who, you know who are the guys who sang with uh, George Lynch? Ani Logan. You know Ani Logan. Oh yeah, from Lynch Mob. Yeah. Yes. Yep. And another guy sang with him, Rob Mason, I think. But like Ro Robert Mason. Yeah, he plays with Warren right now. Right. Right. Yep. But yep. He he kind of reminds me of like a combination of those three guys. He sings a lot like a lot of my favorites from from that genre i've always loved his voice it's so good you know it's fun it's funny you say that because he can sing and you know anything i hope he's not listening to this because he's going to want to raise <laughs> but it's <laughs> but it, it's true man i mean he can sing halford he can sing freddie mercury he can yeah. sing steven tyler bon jovi you nail you, you name it and uh and the thing is his you know like he's he's not no spring chicken either and and he, he hasn't lost a step at all if anything his voice is stronger than ever man wow. and it's it's crazy it's crazy how there's certain people that that can still keep it together like that i mean look at sammy hager just turned 75 years old and he's still killing it out there steven oh, yeah. tyler like 75 yeah. like unbelievable and then you got young guys like you know, John Bon Jovi, you know, they're struggling a bit now, you know, mm -hmm. and, and Don Dawkins and, and there's certain other guys out there that just, they, they, I don't know if it's age coming in or what the deal is, but, uh, yeah, man. So we're really blessed to have uh Pat and, uh, you know, and uh, he just nailed it on this song, man. It's like, Ooh, thank God he's, he's, he, he can sing the way he does, you know? So yeah, yeah, he's, man. he's terrific. The other thing I was going to mention is your playing especially in the outro, those long notes that you play and then there's little multi-note bursts in there. It's, it's, it's super tasteful, man. It sounds amazing. Ah, uh, thanks, man. I didn't know how to approach that one because it, it, it's, it's one of those ones, because it's a moody song, I, you really got to watch it. You, over, you don't overplay on it yeah. because it's that whole section near the end there. It's like, well, okay, the spotlight's on me. I could really let her rip right <laughs> You know, I could do whatever I want and nobody's going to say otherwise. But, you know, I, I, it's just the way everything was just layered and and set up. It just it just I just kind of closed my eyes and it just in one night I just kind of felt it and just it was like doing a dance. You just kind of feel it. And, and yeah. uh, that's that's what came out. I didn't I, I, I was trying to channel a little bit of Brian May in there. You know, the way mm -hmm. Brian May always kind of chooses his notes, you know, accordingly. He oh, never yeah. really. He never really overplays. He always seems to, and that's what I, I was hoping I could do, you know, 
because it's so easy to just start doing they and stuff like that. And, you know, and I go, just start, okay, check this out, check that out. And you got to really watch that, man. And I didn't really feel that kind of a song really called for that. So I kind of really tried to lay back and almost like a David Gilmore type of thing, you know, just kind of hang in there. And, uh, well, thanks for saying that, man. I appreciate you. You know, you, you caught that I was, you know, I'm kind of, it's I'm kind of naked there at the end there, you know? So, uh, I always kind of leery. It's like, mm, did, I, did I do too much? You know, so it's nice to hear some compliments. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, dude, that, that's the hallmark of a great player. Like I said, tasteful is the word, right? Those As soon as I heard those notes, I was like, phrase could just like, and you can rip. So you could have just like filled all those bars with notes, right? But you didn't. And that goes back to those old blues guys, right? Just yeah, man. They, they play just a couple notes, but it's the note choice and it's the way that they hang on it and stretch it out. And it's that's feel. And that, again, is the hallmark of great playing. So well done. Oh, well, thank you very much. Sure. I really appreciate that. Made my day. Made yeah. my day. Good. <laughs> Uh, speaking of, so your musical skin vibration list was sent to me and it's based on a theme and that theme is, all right, that concludes part one of my chat with Greg Fraser. The chat we ended up having a bit, his playlist was so long that I had to break this episode up into two parts. So join me in a couple of weeks to find out what Fraser's theme was and what his songs are. This has been No Sleep Till Sudbury with Brent Jensen and my very special guest, Mr. Greg Fraser. Till next time, folks. Take good care. Brent Jensen is the best-selling author of No Sleep Till Sudbury, Leftover People, and All My Favorite People Are Broken. All titles available in stores and on Amazon Worldwide.